Hi, in this video lecture, we we'll learn how to describe basic information of the sample data. Descriptive statistics are essential for any data. Descriptive statistics, as the name implies, describe the data without saying anything about the larger population. Here you are presented with exam scores of the research methodology class in 2013. The 17 scores are listed. You can describe the data in terms of their mean values, variability, etc. You can use Excel or SPSS to see the descriptive statistics very quickly. Let me demonstrate you some. Using Excel, you can click Data Analysis and select Descriptive Statistics. And the input range you, as you are assigning and um, um, upper range, let's assign here. Okay. Here, very quickly, you get from mean value to confidence confidence level with 95% and in sheet 1 um, yeah I made it more beautifully but basically you can get this they are the same identical data and using SPSS um, you can calculate some different parameters but basically both offer very nice function to calculate the descriptive uh, statistics very quickly and very easily The descriptive statistics offer three major measurements. First, it is about central tendency. Whether it is simply the middle or central or part of any distribution. Second, it is variability. The variability shows how the data are spread or dispersed across the range of all the data. Last, it is about confidence interval. In short, CI. It is a range that estimates the true population value for a statistic. Measures of the central tendency are the first thing you should look at when you run descriptive statistics. The three most common measures of central tendency are mean, median, and mode. In the figure below, the mean or average is 81. The median is the midway point in the distribution. So half of the data are below the median and the other half are above the median. In this data, the median is 82 by averaging 81 and 83. In an example of uh, salaries, median salaries for a company are more commonly reported because the higher executive salaries will skew the mean value so much that the average salary appears much higher than the majority really are. And lastly, the mode is the most frequently occurring value. Here, the mode is 83 because it occurs twice. When a box plot is presented, you have uh, uh, six different informations. And first, the smallest observation here, and the lower quartile here, and median, and upper quartile, and the largest observation here, and the small that here are potential outliers. So the line which crosses the, almost the central part of uh, the box indicates in box plot the median is this. 
Measures of variability show how the data are spread or dispersed across the range of all data. Determining the variability is critical if you want to know how confident you can be of the data. The greater the variability or spread in the data, the less dependable the data are relative, uh, relative to understanding the general population. In other words, the less variability or spread, the more confidence you can have in relating the findings to a large, larger population. Therefore, you can have a more confidence with a data set C than with the data set A or B. The vari variability of a data set A is almost identical to the variability of, of a data set B here. Just their mean values are different. There are three common measures of variability the range, the variance, and the standard deviation. The range is the distance between the minimum and the maximum data points. By observing the range, you will identify outliers. Uh, which are data points that are at the extreme top or bottom of the range. Secondly is the variance. Variance tells you how spread out the data are relative to the average or mean. The formula for calculating variance measures the difference between each individual data point and the mean secure them, sum of all the squares, and then divide the result by the population size n. Therefore, the unit of variance is the square of the unit you measured for the original data. Once you know the variance, you can easily calculate the standard deviation, which is the most commonly used measure of variability. The standard deviation is simply the square root of the variance. Interpreting the standard deviation is easier than interpreting the variance because the unit of the standard deviation is the same as the original data. In addition to these three, here you are presented with the standard error. Standard error indicates how much the particular mean is likely to vary. You calculate the standard error by dividing the standard deviation through the rooted square of a population size n. Therefore, the standard error is inversely in proportion to the population size. In summary, the standard deviation implies the spread of original data while the standard error implies the spread of the mean of original data. If you have listened to the video lecture carefully, you will notice that I was talking about the variability of the population. The population indicates the entire, the entire data. However, in many cases, we are sampling only in some cases, because it is often impossible to um, collect all or examine all. In statistics, we have data from sample, and we try to infer the population, assuming that the sample is well representing, so the sample of watermelon is well representing the entire watermelon, if it is ideal. But usually, uh, they are picking the most delicious part of the watermelon, um, yeah, that we discover um, the fact home. So uh, that's not an ideal case. So ideally, the sample should be uh, representing um, the characteristics of the population. When we calculated the mean or average, the sample mean is identical to population mean. The population mean is um, uh, written with mu in Greek letter. 
However, when we calculate the variance or standard deviation, it is a different story. When we calculated the variance of population, we divided the sum of squares through the size of a population. So in this case, sigma is the rooted square of the population variance and the, here we use the size of a population. But when we calculated the variance of a sample, we divided the sum of the squares through m minus 1. This rule is applied to calculate the standard deviation as well as the standard error of the sample. We always divide it through n minus 1 instead n when we calculate the variability of a sample. Therefore, unless n is very large, so when n is very large, then n will be almost equal to n minus 1, right? So, unless n is very large, sigma is smaller than s. This implies that we accept larger variance or larger standard deviation when we have a sample. By the way, when we run the descriptive analysis in software, we receive many decimal points. Then how many decimal places are necessary? There is no universal answer, but one rule of thumb is that one additional digit in comparison to the original data. The other suggestion is to match with the alpha level. For example, if you set your significance level at 0 0.05, which means your criteria is 95%, you can apply two digits also for describing uh, the other data. Usually in design studies, we set the alpha level at 0 0.05 in this case, more than two decimal places are, are not necessary. The confidence intervals are extremely variable, particularly for the usability studies. A confidence interval is a range that estimates the mean for the population value for a statistic. For example, assume that you need to estimate the mean for the entire population and you want to be 95% certain about what that mean is. Okay, uh, in the figure below here, the 95% com confidence interval is 3.79. This means that you can have a 95% confidence that the population mean is 36 plus or minus 3.79 or between 32.21 and 39.79. Then how to calculate this confidence level? You need to consult T distribution table with the degree of freedom of 16, which is 7, 17 minus 1. The t distribution is referred when we estimated the mean of a normally distributed sample. So, in t distribution, uh, we consider 95% uh, certainty, so the alpha level is 0 0.05. And the degree of freedom is 16 because um, the frequency was 17. So in this case, 17 minus 1 is 16. So then we get the t value of 2.12. So this value is 2.12 multiplied by standard error of the sample. So in this case, 1.79. And then you will get 3.79. When we estimate the mean of the normally distributed population, we consult 
normal distribution. The z value of a two tailed normal distribution for 95% probability corresponds to plus minus 1.96. Let me show you normal distribution. In that case, you don't need a degree of freedom. 95% uh, is set here. So here you see um, 1.96 here as the uh, z uh, value. So in case of the population, the mean ranges mean plus minus 1.96 multiplied by standard error of the population. So it's a slight difference. But when the sample size reaches to 30 or more than, larger than that, the t value and z value becomes very similar, and therefore the confidence interval of a large sample is almost identical to the confidence interval of a population. Perhaps this part sounds um, um, a little bit more complicated than the, um, um, the earlier part, so um, let me explain more in, in details uh, in a class. Thank you for your attention.